This time it's the turn of Microsoft Exchange Hybrid. How does it work and what does it do? And the most important question is, can I do a demo in 30 minutes? Let's find out. Greetings everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. If this is your first time, then you are very, very welcome and it's great to see all of you here. This week I've been super busy. Um, I've been recording a new show, uh, well, a new part of my channel, uh, and it's called Interviews from the Mothership. And the first interview was recorded yesterday. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar uh, with Microsoft Mechanics, formerly known as Garage. Well, the guy that heads that up is Jerry, Jeremy Chapman, who's a director uh, in Redmond. And we had a fantastic conversation about deployment, about where he thinks that Microsoft 365 is going. So check out that. I'm going to post that in a couple of weeks time. So watch out for that interviews uh, from the mothership. OK, now today I thought we would take a look at uh, exchange hybrid. And this is a topic that lots of people uh, have been asking for. So we're going to talk about exactly what it is, how it works and more importantly, what it can do for you. Now, um, what I've done is I've got a little presentation just to kind of run you through kind of the architecture, how it thinks and, and what it does. And then I've got a nice demo uh, at the end. OK, now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, then we love subscribers. So hit that uh, subscribe button, ring the bell and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And uh, as always, please go ahead. If you enjoy the channel, uh, enjoy the channel, enjoy the session, uh, bump that like button it really does make a difference to the channel all right so without any further ado i think it's about time we got our hands dirty on exchange hybrid let's take a look let's, in this session then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, an introduction to hybrid we'll talk about the hybrid architecture the configuration wizard itself uh, talking briefly about a remote mailbox move although i'll cover that in a future session. And I just want to kind of talk a little bit about uh, troubleshooting as well. So essentially, a hybrid deployment is this. It's essentially where you have an on-premises exchange environment. So whether it be 2013, 16, 19, whatever. And you've got uh, an exchange online environment courtesy of Microsoft 365. So essentially, um, you'll remember that when we connect technologies like Azure AD Connect, which is actually a prerequisite for this, and you'll see that in the demo. So you need to have your domain name, so a verifiable domain name. You also need to have Azure AD Connect deployed. So you then need to make a connection between your on-premises and essentially exchange online. And the difference between a migration is when you do a migration, you basically have a server on premises and you have exchange in the cloud. And essentially you're copying everything across to the cloud and then essentially disconnecting your old exchange server. So you don't, you're not using it anymore. Whereas with a hybrid deployment, perhaps you've got so many users or you've got a very large infrastructure that you can't do that. All right. So you need to have that um, continuous connectivity for a period of time to give you a chance to move your users across. And some of the real major benefits, by the way, of hybrid include the fact that with, with a mailbox migration, uh, you have to, or your users would need to log on to their brand new mailboxes, put their credentials in, a little bit of configuration. Some users might not like that. Whereas with a hybrid server, you can see here in the slide 
that essentially exchange on premises sees exchange online just as another server on the same network. And that's really key here. All right. So uh, essentially, it, it's essentially a single organization. So it's this virtual organization that we have. Now, when you run the hybrid configuration wizard, and you can run this from either on-premises or, or within uh, Exchange Online, essentially it says, okay, this is where I currently am, this is where I want to get to, and this is what I need to do in order to get there, all right? And essentially it involves the use of an additional server, perhaps, not necessarily, but at the moment you have a server on premises that takes a role called the CAS server, all right? Client access server. And it's this server that allows your users to connect to things like Outlook Web Access, you know that. Um, so your users can check in their Outlook Web Access. So what the CAS web server does, the additional server, and by the way, you don't need a license for it. It's The license comes free. Um, you deploy this, this additional server on your network and it essentially acts as a router on your network, all right? So when mail comes in, it can quickly determine where that mail is. Is that mail online in Exchange Online or is it on premises? And that essentially is what hybrid is really all about here. All right. So um, with that in mind, and this just gives you the kind of the five kind of detailed steps and there's loads of documentation uh, on this. So essentially coexistence, what do we mean by coexistence? Well, when you deploy Azure AD Connect, it's just, this provides just simple coexistence. So um, in the terms of exchange, if you've got, let's say students on premises, um, or let's say you've got the students in the cloud in let's say Microsoft 365, and you've got teachers on premises with their mailboxes in exchange, then one of the benefits of Azure AD Connect is it gives you this unified global address list. So both parties can see everybody. And that's great. Um, but look at the differences with hybrid. Now you've got, again, you've got a couple of options with hybrid. You've got simple hybrid and you can go with the full hybrid. So if you want to do things like calendar sharing and if you want to do things like, um, let's say you want to do a digital investigation um, against one of your users, you want to, uh, you know, it, it just requires a bit more complexity. Then you can go with the full hybrid as well. All right. So you can see these are the different types of migration. Just to remind you, you've got that IMAP migration and that covers pretty much every type of mailbox. So whether you're using Pegasus, whether you're using, I'm trying to think of old ones here. I'm sure you can come up with something, but essentially really, you know, maybe old systems, um, any kind of kind of web-based system, Google. But the key thing about this is it just takes the mail. All right. So if you've got calendars and contacts and things like that, it doesn't bring those across. And in fact, in many cases, if you've got PST files, you can copy a user's contacts or calendars into a PST file. Uh, you do the IMAP migration and then you basically ingest the PST file as well. That, that's typically for a small company. Um, then in the realms of exchange, you've got two options. You've got what we call a cutover migration and a staged migration. So a staged migration would maybe use, um, let's say uh, you've got Azure AD Connect already deployed within the organization, whereas a cutover ex cutover migration, you don't need anything. It's, a, it's where you've maybe got a, just a, a couple of hundred users and you basically want to migrate them across in the, in the weekend. At the end of the migration, you cut the cord, kick the box over and essentially use it as a coffee table. All right. Whereas a hybrid deployment, as I said, a hybrid deployment, you're deciding to look, I need that. We've got so many users that we can't migrate them in a weekend. And also, rather than the migration, 
with a an exchange hybrid essentially what's happening here is that you put in this let's say I'm, i've got an exchange 2000 let, this is just an example here um so you can see that you've got this client access server and this is the pivot yes this is the pivot so yes you've got your azure ad connect which is syncing your contacts your groups and possibly your devices and then you've got the exchange uh, client access service there as well okay um so why deploy exchange uh, hybrid you want that long-term coexistence to take place typically used for very large migrations the benefit for the user is it's completely transparent so unlike a traditional migration hybrid when you move a mailbox from on-premises into the cloud it's completely transparent to the user because of course hybrid sees the cloud as another server on the same network and that is just brilliant okay so there's no ost or offline stores there's no clunkiness no having to re-log off and log back on again user just comes in on monday morning switches on they're good to go that's a real benefit all right and um, prerequisites you need to have azure ad connect uh, you need to have that free hybrid server forget 2010 they're pretty old um, I mean, you still can do it, but you wouldn't. Um, so typically 2013, 16, 19, you must have a public digital certificate. So you need to purchase a digital certificate, domain name. You're going to have that because, of course, connectivity needs that HTTPS. Um, ADFS is optional if you're using that. And again, if you're using an edge transport server, again, that's also optional as well so essentially the process works a little bit like this you deploy exchange on premises of course um, configure your SSO so things like single sign-on uh, configure that so you know that might involve Azure AD connect ADFS if you're using that but typically Azure AD connect then you'll uh, install that public certificate onto your exchange server as I've mentioned uh, configure the web service um, then we run the hybrid wizard and this is what you're going to see at the end of this demo so again then finally once you've done that you'll configure your MX records um, and then essentially you're good to go that's you you're uh, in hybrid Okay, now I've got to be honest, years back when I first started this, there was no nice UI that you could just click through. In those days, it was all PowerShell and it was about 50 PowerShell steps. So it was quite, um, quite complex in its days. A couple of things you, you need to know, mailbox permissions don't, don't come across. So if you're you know, let's say you're bringing Bob and Mary's mailboxes across and let's say Bob's got access to Mary's mailbox. He's he's her assistant or something like that. I'm being politically correct. <laughs> um, it, any permissions, so send on behalf of, send as permissions, they don't come across. So you would need to go in and you would need to set them up again. All right. Um. In the, in the days of yore, I was just talking about uh, uh, Exchange 2010 there, um, it was a truly horrible experience uh, when we talked about uh, the, the hybrid configuration wizard. It was very painful. Uh, nowadays, it's much easier. So we've now got a single, uh, a single step adaptive wizard. And essentially, this is what the wizard is really doing um, when you run the wizard it basically says this is where I want to get uh, this is where I currently am and this is what I need to do in order to get to that state all right and then off it goes configures that and then essentially at the end of the day with then in hybrid um, just for your own kind of benefit your own knowledge this is what it's doing underneath okay 
So you can see here, get dash hybrid configuration. Uh, and it basically it's determining where we are. So what have we currently got? All right. Um, and it also checks the connectors, both the inbound and the outbound connectors. So this is, okay, where do we want to be? All right. Um, get the accepted domains. And you can see I just put in the PowerShell command, let's see. And you can go back and you can slow this video down um, to see this if you want to. Um, then we're creating the service domain, adding the domain to the actual address policy. Uh, and if any time you can type in get dash federation information in Exchange PowerShell, and this will def de verify that you actually own that domain name, of course. Then the wizard will, off it goes, it will then create a federation trust with the Microsoft Gateway. And under, the, under its skirt, this is essentially what's going on here, yes? So it's creating that on-prem uh, relationship. So this is one of the reasons why you need those three DNS records, really important, of course. You need your MX record, your mail exchanger, you need the auto discover record for Outlook, and you also need that SPF record uh, for security. Um, again, finally, it will then configure the organization uh, relationship. So things like free busy, your archive access, if you're using mail tips, uh, anything like that. Finally, it will then configure the mail flow. Now, to be honest, sometimes you may need to go in afterwards. So in the demo that I'm using, Today, I'll go through the entire wizard, but then what you would need to do is just go in and test and configure your mail flow uh, at the end. Okay. Um, this is what it looks like. So at the moment, um, there are two versions of the uh, configuration wizard. You can either do it through PowerShell at the bottom, or you can do it through the configuration wizard, uh, which is what I'm gonna do. Now, um, if you do have issues, um, one of the nice things is the wizard will tell you it will fail and it will give you a reason why it failed. Uh, and again, it could be a bad credential. Typically, the reasons why it fails, invalid credentials, let's say um, things like you've not got the digital certificate correctly installed. Those are the kind of the main reasons. All right. Um, check the log files. It does have log files and that's where you'll find them. And also again, get dash federation information dash your domain name and it will just confirm that you're actually um, in hybrid there. One thing when you do run the wizard, um, it prompts you to where do you currently want your exchange content to go, um, make sure that you click on the right one here. Uh, obviously, if you're in Norway, there's a Norwegian option, um, Sweden as well, um, the UK. Um, this list is a little out of date. There's more options here uh, now as well. Um, in terms of SMTP, of course, um, again, these are some of the current limits on it. So, uh, again, make sure that you've got the appropriate licensing, of course, for your users. TLS um, is obviously required uh, in there as well. So again, configure those. So once you've configured uh, hybrid, of course, the real benefit then is you can then schedule those mailbox moves. So essentially you right click your mailboxes and you say, hey, I want to schedule a mailbox move. And at the appropriate time, it will then start. First of all, what it does is it copies, it creates that mailbox in the remote location copies the content in and essentially deletes the on-premises option. But at the same time, it's um, the service that makes this possible is the MRS proxy, the mailbox replication service proxy. And you can see that this is that gateway, the, the pendulum that's essentially moving that content. So when 
um, a user says, hey, you know, where's John's mailbox or when's John's mail? It's that MRS proxy that says, yeah, he's over here in Exchange Online or he's over here in Microsoft 365. Um, real benefit for the user, of course, is it's completely transparent. So, of course, I'm using single sign-on. Um, it makes it the whole experience so much easier. You don't need all this stuff about a password. You don't need to worry about that, of course, because it's all uh, fully single sign-on. All right, so preparation is the key. Again, verify domain name, deploy Azure AD Connect, and make sure that you've got that public a digital certificate for your domain name. Okay, um, and there you go. Okay. okay, so just a quick review of hybrid. Right now, I think we'll take a look at the actual demo. Okay, so before you can do a deployment of Exchange, we need to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead here and I've got a public digital certificate that I'm just going to install. So I've just got the PFX file here. And I'm just going to go ahead and install that onto this current machine. Um, and of course, you need to be a, a local admin for this. So I'm just going to go ahead, uh, just pop in the password there. Now, as I mentioned previously, there are a number of prerequisites. This is the first of those prerequisites, um, as is a custom domain name. So assuming that you've gone out, you've purchased your domain name for your organization already and of course you go you need to go ahead as well as uh, and deploy things like azure ad connect as well so i'm going to come here into my microsoft 365 portal here and essentially we're just looking at some of the prerequisites for exchange hybrid so i'm going to flip down here i'm going to go into my domains and I've kind of sped this video up a little bit just to really kind of save time. And I'm going to go in and I'm now going to add in my custom domain name. Uh, and I'm going to then, once I've done that, of course, it will then ask me to verify the record. So I've got a TXT record and that will typically give me an MS equals MS um, identifier. And using that, I then use paste that into my DNS server and that will then verify. Now, once that's been verified, the other things that you will need to do here, you will need to add in your exchange records and this includes your MX record, your um, CNAME record, so your alias record for Microsoft Outlook, also along with an SPF record as well. So you can see here, again, I've just sped that up a little bit. You can see that these have now been installed and my custom domain name is now verified. And I'm just using kind of a lab uh, environment here just for demo. All right, so now that I've done that, another prerequisite of course is you need to have Azure AD Connect installed. So here I'm going to just open up the Azure AD Connect wizard. Again, I'm just going to very quickly flip through this. Um, so I'm just going to go in through my express settings this time. The only additional thing you might want to do, in fact, you will want to do is click on the SSO single sign on option. So I'm just logging in with my credentials here. So this is, of course, what you're doing is you're creating that connector between the two organizations. So between your on-premises organization and the cloud, uh, you need to uh, click on to that. So uh, next it will ask me to put in my on-premises. So this is my Adatum organization here. So I'm just pasting that in and I'm going to click next. And it's then saying, okay, you can see that it's verified my uh, Go Deploy Labs um, uh, lab DNS record there. And I'm just going to accept that and I'm going to move on. Now, just to say uh, I'm using, um, you can see it's 
using a password synchronization option, but definitely make sure that you check this checkbox. This is the Exchange Hybrid Deployment. Now, even if you're not ready for that deployment, it's just a good idea to go ahead and click it anyway. So now that you've done that, there is, of course, one other couple, couple of other little things that you need to do. And again, not every document or every book actually makes this correct. What I would probably do is go in and make sure that you've enabled the recycle bin it just in Active Directory on your on-premises server. So here I'm just going to go into Active Directory. I'm going to go into the local admin center here, and I'm just going to go ahead and enable that recycle bin. Now you need for that you need Windows Server 2008 and above. Um, so make sure that that's enabled. The reason for that is because if you delete objects in the cloud. They, or if you delete objects on premises, it deletes them in the cloud. And of course, if you try and restore them in the cloud, there's no recycle bin on premises. So you have an orphaned object. So make sure that you go ahead and enable that. So those, ladies and gentlemen, are the prerequisites, okay? So you can see that those, the domains are in, the connectors are in, it's now syncing. So if I just go into my active users here, and you can see at the moment, I've just got on-premises, uh, sorry, rather in cloud um, accounts, but I've just refreshed, you can see that on-premises directory synchronization connector, and you can now see that some of those user accounts are coming in. So if I just refresh this page, in a moment, you'll just see that, okay, there you go. So you can now see those on-premises users uh, have now synced into 365. The one thing I would say, of course, is they don't come in licensed. So make sure that you go ahead and you license that. Now, um, next thing that we want to do is we're now ready to obviously deploy. So I'm going to click into other features in my Exchange server, and I'm going to click on those or on that hybrid settings. And what this does, it will run the hybrid configuration wizard. Now you can either do this from your on-premises server or your cloud-based server. It doesn't really make any difference. So it's selecting my on-premises Exchange server. I only have one. And for the purpose of this demo, I'm just choosing Exchange Worldwide. And you can see it's already picked up my credentials. So that's great. And all I need to do now is put in my uh, account details for Microsoft 365. So I'm just pasting in my username and my password here. All right. That just takes a moment to come through. Okay. So now we, what this is doing is it's now creating that organizational relationship that I mentioned in the slides, all right? So now that that just takes a few minutes to run through, by the way, and it says, okay, do you want to do a minimal hybrid? Do you want to do a full hybrid? And this is good because it gives you a lot of additional content, or are you likely to just kind of uh, is this like a one-time hybrid and you want to get rid of it? Um, well, I'm looking for things like um, sharing, uh, free busy connections, um, and I want the more complex option. So I'm choosing that one. Now it says here, do you want to use a um, classic or the modern? So you might use the modern solution, but I'm going to use the classic solution here. And the reason is it, it requires me to enter more content. And it just it's so that you can actually see what's happening. So it now prompts me for my exchange admin credentials. So again, I'm just, oh, sorry, I just made a mistake. Uh, it's going to ask me for my credentials, uh, my username, and my password, and I'm just going to click on that. Okay, so now the configuration comes through, and it says, I want to configure my client as a mailbox and client access server. And it says, okay, what's your receive connector? So where's it coming from? Again, for this demo, I'm only using one server, but you might have multiple ones here. 
Likewise, I'm also clicking on my send connector here and I'm clicking on next and it will now prompt me for that um, exchange transport certificate. OK, now just be careful with this, because when you click on the drop down arrow, it does offer a couple of internal certificates. But the one that we actually need is the top one here, which is our external one that we purchased. OK, so we need that for the mail relay. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and click on next and everything is looking good so far. Yeah. OK, so I'm just putting in my organization's fully qualified domain name. So that looks good. And now what's happening is a whole bunch of PowerShell is actually running. And you can see there it's actually running those PowerShell commands. And again, for the purpose of this demo, I've shortened this because this does take a little bit of time. So you kind of need to be patient here. So once that has finished, it should hopefully um, work. Now look at the message there. It said uh, configuring MRS proxy settings. Did you see that? That's the mailbox replication service that I mentioned earlier. And we'll see that in a moment. All right. So hopefully, yes. OK, so it says congratulations. Uh, it explains what it's done and it's there's also a couple of links there that will take you through to docs.microsoft.com. So again, feel free to go off and have a look at those. All right. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the close button. And the next thing that we want to do is actually go ahead and look at what it's actually done with those MRS proxy settings. Now, um, as I mentioned, the one thing that you would then just go and check are your um, your mailbox uh, rules. So, um, yeah, things like your connectors. So, OK, so you can see that those connectors have come in. Um, everything's looking good. All right. So, yeah, you've got your accepted domains. Um, again, those connectors are all in the correct place. Again, you would maybe go ahead and do some mail flow. Just check the mail flow rules to make sure that they're OK. Um, again, any kind of misconfigurations, this is a good opportunity to kind of go in and fix that. There is some great documentation, by the way, on docs.microsoft.com. Uh, so you can go ahead and you can check that out now. Um, next thing, likewise, I'm just going to pop up here to my exchange server now. And again, you can see that we've got everything here. Everything looks good. And I'm just going to click on those mail flow rules. You can see again that, that those connectors have come in. And the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to click on to the servers option. And there's the exchange web service. OK. And I'm going to go into virtual directories, um, just double checking the certificate is in place. Yep, there's that uh, digital certificate. So that's great. That's gone in now. So I've got that secure connectivity. So that's good. Um, uh, and exchange default web services here. You can see that. And I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that. By the way, you'll notice that my browser is not secure. This is again, this was just for demo purposes. But look, there you go. The MRS endpoints. So the mailbox replication service endpoint, it's pointing to the correct place. So there you go. We have now successfully performed an exchange hybrid. OK, looks good. Just double check the permissions. Yeah. And that's great. And just click on save. All right. So there you have it. Exchange hybrid. Isn't that cool? Uh, so I really hope that you enjoyed that, by the way. Right. It's that time again. It's question time.
Okay, so this week's question time, have you ever posted a video and then later on wish that you hadn't? Well, for me, it was my BitLocker video. Uh, don't get me wrong, I know thousands of people have looked at it and I'm so grateful for that. But every day I get this question, uh, I forgot my BitLocker password or it's locked or something or my, my disk is encrypted or there's something terribly wrong. Uh, can you help me fix it? No, I can't is the short answer. Okay, but what I can do is I can give you some great advice. Okay, if you're running a Windows system, make sure that you back up your BitLocker key. And if you're brave enough to use encryption on your hard drives, especially if you've got Windows 11 and things like that, you, backing up that key is absolutely critical, okay? Uh, without that key, you're in, you're in a world of pain, let me put it that way. Another good suggestion is, guys, we're in the cloud here. We're in Microsoft 365. Take advantage of OneDrive for Business, SharePoint. Make sure that you back up your content to these places. Uh, and then worst case scenario, if you're in crypto drive, you just can't get back into it, then you can just reformat the disk, reinstall a fresh copy of Windows, and your data is still there. All right, that is my advice to you. And please don't call me, especially on a Friday afternoon, asking for support. In fact, don't call me at all. <laughs> Remember, um, you know, in, in terms, if you're looking for personal support, we're not a support company, okay? So reach out to the uh, appropriate vendor. But questions, comments, absolutely, absolutely get them in here. And very, very soon, we're going to be launching our own support forum where you guys can answer and ask questions between you as well. So watch out for that. That's going to be very cool. That's coming soon, by the way. So there you go. Wow, what a busy session that was this week. Huh? Now you're a little bit wiser about Microsoft uh, Hybrid. Hey, listen, thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, if you've uh, not subscribed, bump that subscribe button, uh, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And as always, I really do appreciate you bumping that like button. Okay, comments, questions about this or any of my other sessions, please get them down below there. And remember what I said, uh, watch out for that episode uh, with Jeremy Chapman in a couple of weeks time from Microsoft Mechanics. That is going to be such a cool episode. All right. So uh, thanks again. You stay safe and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.